Tyler Moana. Warrior. Eh. So how y'all doing? Hello, hello. Been doing a lot of scavenging, upgrading, finding really cool shit. Um, managed to find an empower, which that's a nice little bit of uh, money right there if I can get it leveled up. Even leveling up to three is already like an exalt or two. Um, exalted orb, whatever. Um, having it fully leveled and then uh, and maybe even corrupted depending on what it gets. Um, that's like 10 exalts easy depending on what happens. Um, leveled a bit, found another soul for <clears throat> my Pantheon. Like, this is coming out Millhouse, as far as I'm concerned. Everything's coming out Millhouse. Um, God, I don't, I don't think Cartman should ever voice Millhouse. <clears throat> Whoever, I can't remember who voices Cartman. Is it one of the creators? Eh, whatever. Um, so everything's been doing really well with this. Been running maps, beating uh, some of the new bosses, which are there's one or two that. Well, there's one that bothered me. Like, I actually was whooping my ass. Um, it's the uh, poison one. Uh, Al Ha... Al Hasman, I think it is. Al, Al Hesman. Yeah, I don't like him. The other three are whatever. For Atanya is uh, the only one I thought was going to be a real problem because she's an ice-based one, and I just end up getting frozen half the time and my flasks as I have them just don't fix that uh, aside from that yeah it's just been running maps and getting shit done so one of my, <clears throat> one of my friends made a post or you know shared a post sometime it was either I think it was yesterday, but uh, it was talking about, you know, people, you know, curling up with books. Why don't people talk about curling up with video games? You know, it could be just as relaxing, just as much of an escape from, you know, the world and everything. Well, the thing about, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about two different things with that. The first one is escapism. And the second thing I'm going to talk about is actually the difference between the two and why there is such a difference. Um, so, part one, easy deal. <sighs> escapism in general, it depends on your perspective in escapism. If you're... Oh, look. <sighs> There's a huge problem with escapism to an extent. And that problem is it's escapism. You're not facing whatever problem if you're if it if it's escapism for like a short you know bit of time to get through your day, whatever. You know, you just need that's how you relax. That's not really escapism, that's relaxing. Escapism is and a totally different thing. It has a different connotation to it. Um, escapism is kind of like the Binding of Isaac issue where you are locking yourself up in a little box and trying to mentally shunt all your worries so you don't ever have to feel like you're you know, being pressured. <laughs> You're, you're escaping reality. That's why it's called escapism. Um, but the problem is, is it's not like it's gone away. Like reality's there, problems are still there, and whether you're fixing them or not, well, obviously, it sounds like you're not because escapism. You know, huge tonal change in connotation. Um, so there's that. 
I, I could go in a little bit deeper than that. I, I'm not a psychologist. So I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm an expert, but, you know, that that's just... That's the language, you know? And if there's something I do believe in, it, it, or I do subscribe to, it's what you say... You have to pay attention to how you say things, because... Yes, there are synonyms and, you know, English language is pretty complex in a sense that we have synonyms for everything. We have 50 different words for the exact same thing, but the problem is, at least in theory, but there is a huge difference in tone. It's kind of like, instead of having a totally different word for things, we have the same word, but different tone, essentially. Um, that subtlety is really off-putting. Um, not sure what you might think of, how you might think of it as being different, but yeah. look at other languages where there are literal differences, like a literally different word for a totally different concept where we have 10 words that might mean the exact same thing, but only, and then only one or two that have a tonal change. And it's just, that's where the com complexity can come in. You know, what means what. Um, oh, 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 you want to freeze me, huh? Ooh, don't like that. There we go. Um, so, now I'm going to mention the difference between, like, books, video games. <clears throat> books require you to essentially use your imagination. You don't have a thing sitting in front of you to tell you what a thing looks like. You have to read and then visualize what a thing looks like. Now, if that sound sounds obvious, that's because it is. Boom. I'm going to pick that up just in case. Um... All right, neat. So you have a but. So that's books, though. But with video games, the same way with movies, you'll you'll be sitting there and you'll watch whatever's going on, right? What is this? Oh, yeah, yeah, buddy, go ahead, go ahead and take it. Um, books, video games, you're sitting there looking at what's happening. There is no real imagination happening. You're not having to visualize things so much. Which, that could be a good or bad thing. It just depends on how you look at it. I'm still, like right now, I'm still fairly relaxed. I'm just going through the motions. I know what I'm doing. But, uh, yeah, I need to find a, I need to either get another tab or something to kind of handle miscellaneous extra stuff like organs and new things. Everything else is pretty organized, generally. Except for when, yeah, that, this, my random tab is always a little messy. And then we get... I'm, I, I don't really want to get the one that has all the prophecies because I normally don't itemize prophecies. Um, anyway. But where creativity comes in with video games, though, is critical thought. Um, you have... It, it, you have to problem solve in some way, shape, or form. Like this, the creativity or the uh, critical thought and creativity 
where I have to sit here and think about how to do things is when I'm making a build. I mean, whenever you're presented with this, go on, take it in. Just, oh, yeah, and you, I mean, if you've watched any of these, you saw where I started. You know, I start like with this particular character or this build. My spot that I started in was right here, this first node. You know, I could have picked, and I, immediately you have a choice. Where do you want to start? There are times where you would start right here and go that side. Um, not for this build, though. This build utilizes two-handed weapons. So, the next thing I generally did after doing this a little bit and grabbing some, like, life nodes and stuff like this was coming down here, hitting the two-handed stuff, coming down here, going across, grabbing these life nodes, and building and building and building. It uses Cyclone, so you grab the channeling stuff. You keep building, grab some life nodes, keep building. And you see how this build kind of sprang, you know, kept going up. Now, there are a lot of builds for this, and one of the main things that I did that others might not have done was like this right here now what I might do later is get rid of some of this Let's see and put them back down here to grab these two 14s the only reason is because I was trying to build into this and then like I don't have all the res necessary resistances, so, you know, picked up these just to help my resistances. And this is all the way up here where the Scion starts. <laughs> the Scion starts right here, um, between these... No, alright, actually, see, if you look at this weird thing in the middle, that's where the character starts. And each one of those is a different character. But, uh, but having a concept and building on that concept, it's not, that's not easy. And it's the same way with people who do speedruns. Um, speedrunners do that same thing, but on a more complex level. They are... They're figuring out different ways to basically break the game. You know, there are some common themes like collision glitches where you can get out of bounds and go to different areas of the game that are linked based on their load zones and so on. Um, yes, that that's a thing, but ha each game is different on how that happens and where it's more efficient to do that um, sometimes you can't do that because if you do that <clears throat> if you sequence break in the wrong place the rest certain parts of the game won't load or you have to hit load triggers and certain flags that are in the game <clears throat> to ki basically trick the game into thinking that you've already done a thing um, and so on there's some game, and then there's categories where you don't do that. You basically played 100% of the game, but you, it's all skill-based, um, essentially. You know, there, there's a lot more to it, though. What I'm getting at is there's there's still critical thinking, that, and that's the big difference between books and video games or mo on movies. But honestly, video games from any other media or form of entertainment media. Video games require... A, you know skill and to do well require a certain level of skill and critical thinking that will push you into the next level of it put you in a place where you can like you're actually doing a thing books and movies you're not really doing a thing when you're consuming the type of media 
Video games, I'm doing a thing. I have to do a thing. If I just stood here, like this, nothing's happening. I'm not doing anything. Although, if I'm playing Necromancer, one can argue I'm not doing much anyway. Um, that's not true at all. I love Necromancer, but, you know. But... Eh. Same guy the same way goes with, you know, games where you're trying to break them. You know. There's critical thought, there's things I have to do. I think I already yeah, I already have that one. Fungal Hollow. Don't remember if I've done that map or not, but we'll find out, aren't we? Um, the other thing video games have managed to do because you are doing a thing, especially if you're doing it well, um, is stuff like uh, Awesome Games Done Quick, AGDQ, or Summer, uh, Summer Games Done Quick, the European Speedrunners, um, so on. You know, raising those groups, those speedrunning communities have been helping raise money for Doctors Without Borders or the uh, different cancer, cancer foundations, um, St. Jude's. Uh, there's actually a uh, St. Jude's thing with Twitch um, every year where different uh, and a lot of streamers, you know, whenever they get donate any donations and you know, money they get, they send put a portion of that away uh, just to give to St. Jude's and they raise millions of dollars for St. Jude's um, that sort of stuff is something that books haven't done they've never done they never will do because they're not doing a thing you know it's it they're not you're not doing anything there's no real incentive for that to happen um, yeah I'm not saying that books, you know, book sales wouldn't be used to go towards those things. But it's not something that generally just, it doesn't happen. So, to me, as far as I'm concerned, video games hold a very special place in entertainment media. Now, you can argue that all you want, but proof's in a pudding, you know? What, you know, the proof of it, like this uh, past uh, AGDQ, you know, like 3.2, 3.1 million dollars raised in a week for a Cancer Foundation. I'm sorry, but when's Hollywood really done that in a single event. Yeah, I mean, individual, you know, actors or um, artists or uh, musicians, so on, I'm sure each one of them might have put in, you know, hundreds of times more than that. Yeah, I I'm sure that's happened at some point or another, but the difference is, again, to me at least, the, and it's a powerful difference, <laughs> the the people who have donated to Cancer Foundation and oh another pair of uh, Wonderlust no that's the other one Wonder Trap um sorry the difference is the Cancer Foundation and AGQ and all that stuff. This is average people donating because, you know, because you know, they want to help and it's a way to donate and see cool things that runners are doing and so on and so forth. Because otherwise, a lot of people don't think much of the speedrunning community. 
uh, except for you know it looks awesome and it's just a really cool hobby but again it's one of those things where since when has a hobby raised millions of dollars for a good charity or a good cause of some sort it doesn't it doesn't really happen like that all too often as far as I know I mean there might be something I'm missing somewhere that I haven't seen or heard of and that I won't disagree with you on you know the possibility is there that I'm just missing um, but yeah I would love to take part in something like that I mean I've donated to cancer foundation during like a GDQ that, that that's a thing done that but I've never uh, Yeah, you know, I, I haven't taken part in speedrunning generally. Um, never really took part in the speedrunning community generally, I should say. I have tried my best to run like a game as quickly as possible without like glitches or anything. Uh, depending on the game, of course, what we're talking about. Um. Sacrifice at noon. Sweet. Uh, the reason I am happy about seeing a sacrifice at noon is because that's actually probably the hardest one to find. Um, it's the rarest one. Or no. Midnight. Midnight's the rarest one. Fuck, it's not noon. Sorry. Sorry, got excited for nothing. Sorry. Wow, I think I full cleared. Whoops. <laughs> Almost. There's only 20 enemies left. That's probably just random, like, enemies on the way. Oh, there's like a little group. Screw you guys. Go ahead and just kill all of you. Wow, I missed a few. Not that I meant to full clear, to be honest, but. It's kind of funny, almost came out of the tent. And would I ever speedrun? If I found a game that I really, really, really wanted to speedrun, I don't know if I'd still do it, simply because it's just... It's not the way I like to generally play video games, you know? It's not my preferred method again it, it's not to say that I couldn't um, although I'm getting a little older you know once you start hitting like 25 to 30 you know, reflexes start going down yes your brain fully finally quote unquote finishes developing by um, 25 or 26 generally but uh I believe in traveling light your body starts breaking down your brain developed body breaks down go figure generally uh, it's not saying there's not exceptions or that uh You know, there aren't people that that doesn't really apply to. There are always exceptions to the rule. I think I want to keep the extra... I think that's an extra pair of Wonder Traps. It is. I'm going to go ahead and keep those just in case. I like having the extra... Uniques just because I like having I like collecting. I'm a collector of rare and exotic goods. No, um, I 
It's just a habit. This sort of thing just appeals to me. Collecting and everything in its place. Don't know why. It's just a... Just a thing. Welcome. Consumerism. And all that, I suppose. <laughs> I want the thing, so I'm going to get the thing. Nice! Sacrifice at midnight. That's the one I wanted. I've already beaten at Ziri on this run. Um, it's actually the first time I ever fought at Ziri. But uh, I beat her on this character in this league. So uh, I have no use for a sacrifice at midnight. Um, but just to... Let's see how much a sacrifice at midnight is. Uh, before I do that, though, let's... Go ahead and get rid of those. Doop. There you go, buddy. I sell fossils and random shit really cheap. Um, but that, that's that's a trick to uh, the market. If you really want to ensure that you sell a thing, you know, sell it cheaper than everybody else, it will uh, it'll get sold. <laughs> Not, not a lot of people want to do that, but let's see. Sacrifice at midnight. Three chaos. Couple of uh, gem cutter. One chaos. Two chaos. Like, you actually have to buy them. But, th which is funny because them at... Oh, that's because not a lot of people probably... There's probably not a huge demand for them. Because I'm not sure how many people actually go to fight Hetziri because they already have and there's really no point in doing so other than getting uh, certain things I forget I forget all what all what she drops I know she pit and drops uh, Hetziri Splendor I think it is and uh, Disfavor I do believe but uh there's three different ways to fight her, too. There's through the Apex of Sacrifice. Um, there's through Incursions with Alva, if you can upgrade the Apex to a Throne Room, I think it is. Um, you can fight her through the Fragments, which is what I did. And you go straight to the Apex of Sacrifice. And then... Uh, it's not a map. It's another fragment thing, but I, I, I forget what it's called. Um, you know, shame on me, I guess. Um, where's that blighted map? I had a blighted map in here somewhere. Didn't I? There it is. Found it. And that's the other thing is, while books are art in them themselves, because I mean, what's I tend to put writing in the same realm as physical, uh, visual art, I should say. Um, visual art, written art, movie art. You know, there, there's a lot of different styles of art. And then there's uh, complexities in between, of course. Um, I'm just kind of opening up the map a little bit for some reason. Just kind of... Wow, that is... That's... That's disgusting. Wow, I like how it moves, though. I really like the way that looks. Huh. Huh. 
But, um... Holy crap. Yeah, I'm trying to keep up with where the blight is moving. Yeah, it hasn't gone north yet. That's good. Um, sorry, blotted maps are kind of interesting in that if you watch all those lines and you see where I look at the bottom of the screen where it says pump durability. Um, if you look, there is a line of what little circles. Those are all portals. Those will all open eventually. Um, and your objective is basically tower defense. Um, but the trick is, at least for me, what I'm doing right now is kind of holding down a single area. And I'm having to want, make sure that those lines don't go north. Because what right now, this is great. I can bottleneck the hell out of... Oh no. <laughs> no. It's starting to branch right here. Um, so now I'm going to have to pay attention where red dots are coming up and starting to move. Uh, go ahead and do that just to slow them down. So now, and then there's basically bosses that will spawn. But the problem is these fuckers will start getting too close and I have to really start moving to ensure that they don't I'm gonna go ahead and do that to empower oh my god came out he just came running see what I mean they just start coming out of the woodwork And then it gets, it starts getting difficult. And this build is up close and personal. It's not like a, uh, um, bow build or a spell build or anything. Because if it was, this would be probably a lot easier. <clears throat> but, uh, it is not, it is not that type of build. So it's very up close, personal. I gotta keep moving. And killing as quickly and efficiently as possible which is not easy yeah I think I'm gonna lose this one which is fine I am um, it's one of those things that I do every once in a while I kind of seldom just a uh oh. Yep, it destroyed him. Fuck. There it went. Oh well. Uh, and I don't think I've completed any of them. That's a. That's a shame. 
Look at this little guy. Sometimes there's a glitch where like some of them survive after the thing's done. But see if you can beat it. Wow, see there's one way down here. Um, if you can beat it, you get you know, a good twenty, thirty some odd chests or more. Um that's just nothing but loot. Um, which is awesome. Like it's really cool. But yeah. Oh well. I'm starting to believe that these groups have some sort of central brain isn't exactly the right word, but it isn't far off. These larger groups, these blighted maps you found, they may lead us to the original source of the blight. Not long ago, I believe they were a symptom. See, that's the thing, like, this type of build is better for maps and uh, the labyrinth and so on, but uh, not good for blighted maps. Because that's, essentially blighted maps are nothing but tower defense. Greetings. And it's just kind of, yeah. Anything good? No. Kind of garbage, actually. That's actually not bad. I'll keep that for now. Um, get rid of that, get rid of that. What about you? Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Don't care about that. Alright. Easy peasy. That'll go in my random tab. Again, the random tab is usually just gear that I'm going to keep for future characters a lot of times. Um, and sometimes some of it just randomly sells. Which is cool. I mean, I... I I'd rather it sell and somebody else use it than just sit there and not get used at all at some point. Um, because gearing and, and whatever somebody offers, I'll just take as the first one. Like, I don't care what people offer usually. Unless it's ridiculously... Like, if you try to offer me, like, a single orb of fusing... Or a single, like, <laughs> chromatic orb for something that has hard to get, um, like, if, if I had an extra carcass jack, let's just make this easy, or better yet, where's, hmm, like this, Condos Prod is, you know, maybe a couple of chaos. It's not super expensive, but it, this one's six link. Six link in itself is hard to get. That that to make a natural six link, first you have to have the six sockets, and that could be it could be one jeweler orb, but it is hard to get. Normally it'd be like hundreds of jeweler orbs. That's that's a lot of chaos in of itself. And then the six link, that could be thousands of orbs of fusing. That's like exalts worth of infusing uh, to do that. So, you know, if someone offered me a single chaos for this sword, I would laugh at them. <laughs> um, granted, I got this one from a drop, actually, which was incredible I almost cried <laughs> it, it's if I could it's not my it's not the preferred in-game uh, weapon like it's not the best weapon in slot for me um, there is one weapon better um, and if I could get it it'd be awesome but that is 20 exalts easy which in other words fucking expensive um, if I could get that cool but I probably won't so this is prop is literally the budget version of it. Um, as a matter of fact, this is pretty much the budget version of this build, um, with some minor exceptions. Like Carnage Heart wasn't necessary, but Carnage Heart is really good. It makes this build in the way I'm playing it better. Getting extra damage from while leeching is insane, and if I could finish. 
getting my if I could get my last ascendancy which is which I would put to this leech effects are not removed at full health and there's a 50% increased attack damage while leeching um 15% increased attack speed while leeching 6% reduced damage taken while leeching brutal fervor is so fucking good simply because Carnage Heart gives me a 32% damage increase while uh, the item uh, gives me 32% damage increase while leeching. If this removes the cap for life leech, because life leech ends when you're at full life. You can't leech more than 100%. Well, that removes that effect. Or this node removes that effect. So then you start, and you get a fit, and this also gives you 50% increased attack damage while leeching. So if you're always leeching, you're always getting the 50% increased attack damage, plus the carnage heart. So that means I'll always have an while I'm attacking, will always have an 82% increased attack damage. That's that's fucking crazy. Um, that's so good. Like if you look at just my base damage per second right this second like right now while not attacking anything while not hitting anything I should say it's 48 oh just around 49,000 imagine that being almost doubled while I'm hitting something and that's not including channeling while I'm attacking because if you actually watch what it does channeling this skill gets it to where it's at 53,000. Now, basically double that. Yeah, I'm doing over 100,000 DPS. Like, uh, over 100,000 damage per second. Look at the attack time. 0.15 seconds. So every 0.15 seconds, I am hitting... I, I'd be hitting something. That's insane damage. Um, that's why I like it. I nearly one touch anything now. Um, and that's not, and by the way, that doesn't factor in Carnage Heart. Because I'm not hitting anything. Had I hit something, I would have gotten another third dropped onto that, uh, dumped onto that. So you're talking like another like 10 or 15,000. Yeah, about 15-ish thousand damage. A little more than that, but it, that's about right. It's more like closer to like 15.5, 15.7, you know, something like that. Um, on, dumped on top of the 48,000. 49,000. Give or take. Um, I, I'd rather go one way or the other. So imagine removing that cap and you're and getting another 50% topped on that. That's, in, that's incredible for this build um, and again I wish I had the other weapon but because the other weapon is expensive like uh, where is it at um, and especially now because getting to the elder or shaver you can still do it but it's not as easy well it never was easy but uh, which one is uh, Starforge yeah, this one. 22 exalts. But look at the damage on this thing. That's its base damage. Well, no, that's not its base damage. That, they added a 20% quality, but why wouldn't you, right? Uh, but your physical damage can shock. What shock does is it give, uh, it basically makes it to where enemies take even more damage. Um, increased attack speed, obviously you're hitting more often. 20% increased area of effect. Like, that's just dumb. Like, but Starforge is. Oh, there's a 16 Exalt one. Hey. <laughs> and then 18. Like, that, that, but that's normal. Like, that's. Those are normal prices for this thing. But then why you go, well, why don't you get Void Forge? Because Void Forge 
It's just not nearly as good. It really isn't. Yes, it wouldn't... Well, no, it actually would be bad. Generally for me. Because elemental damage is no bueno for me. Especially in the sense that one of the... Uh, things I have on here is actually this. Um, headsman. Uh, that middle line says, uh, cannot take reflected elemental damage. Or, excuse me, physical damage. What that actually means is that... In map, there are certain maps where, and certain enemies, that reflect damage. Uh, depending, like, of certain types. So, whether it's elemental or physical. Um, because I do, essentially, pure... I, there might be one or two things that do elemental because of uh, some kind of conversion. But generally, I do only physical damage. Cool. So, this does nothing to me. So, if an enemy reflects physical damage, I don't get hurt either way. I don't care. If it reflects elemental damage, I don't care because I don't do elemental damage. And even if I did, I don't do enough to where it would actually break through how much healing I can do. Um, through my at Ziri's promise and through my life flasks and stuff so and then my leeching of course my natural leeching that I have for the different nodes that I have so and this build's not optimized I, I mean it's not even close to being done sorry I keep going back to this but like this right here this whole bit of nonsense like what I'll end up doing is once I link it right here originally the reason I came did the, did it this way was actually to get to this and I said fuck it I'll go over here and grab these but really the way this should work is I need to get rid of two of these little nodes in the middle where it's 8% increased phys melee physical and put them essentially down here um, that would just be better but and that will probably be the next thing I do like I'll put a point a life node right here so it links here take off these two and put them down here and so instead of getting 8% increased damage I'll get 4 uh, instead of getting only 16 correction 16 damage there or 16% increased damage, I'll get 28. Which would be a lot better. I'm also thinking about adding in the rest of... At least getting these impale ones right here. Uh, simply because the enemies you impale have 10%... A negative 10% physical damage reduction. And getting increased physical damage and so on. Um, basically make getting it to where I'm hitting a critical mass of how much damage I'm doing. Um, that or just hitting some of these other life nodes. Um, I might actually just do that and hit the rest and get all these life nodes around Constitution. Um, you know, there, there's there's different things. Like I, I have a lot of options for the le uh, rest of my levels. Um... I mean, a lot of options. I have another 16 levels, technically, to play with. If I leveled all the way to 100, which, that's ridiculous in the first place, but is what it is. If I, if, if and only if, I did that, you know, I could hit a lot of different things in here and just completely max out but that's any build you know there's always as far as the passive tree goes there's always something you can do up to 100 you know you could always add in more dodge here or get more life nodes get and life nodes is really what you should be doing anyway um, it, it just depends oh uh, well Anyway, I think that's 
all I've got for today, but I'll see you guys next time. Bye.